Welcome to Core Cutting Today for November 27th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story there in the order I talk about them so you can read them for yourself and let us know what you think. I'll really appreciate it. Real quick before we get into it, the next couple days schedule will be a little off. Uh, don't think I'm going to be doing any type of video tomorrow, but we will have a special Black Friday um, version of the Core Kind Today show. So keep an eye out on YouTube. We will be uh, uh, active this weekend and hopefully help you save some money with the best Black Friday deals we can find for core cutters. But if you're traveling and you're going to be gone, I hope you're going to have a fantastic week. Please be safe out there. And I'll see you all next Monday after all the Thanksgiving craziness. All right, let's get into it. Starting off with some more Black Friday deals. We have a huge master list we just posted this morning of all the best Black Friday deals, including a $29.99 uh, Stick Plus, a $99.99 Tableau DVR, uh, $19 Fire TV Sticks, Fire TV Cube Sales, Echo Sales, uh, Smart TV Sales, and more. So check out that list in the show notes down below. Using those links do help Core Cars News. We would appreciate it. It helps us stay in business. Costs you nothing to use our affiliate links there. But hopefully you help Core Cars News break free from the high, or uh, help you break free from the high cost of cable TV. Also, Roku announced that if you buy a Roku, so if you take advantage of the $29.99 uh, Roku Stick Plus, or on Black Friday, the $49.99 Roku Ultra, you can get three months of Hulu and Pandora for free when you purchase a new Roku, new customers only. So you can't be an existing customer and take advantage of this, sadly. But that is a really good deal, so check that out. Link in the show notes down below if you want full details. And you can buy that Roku anywhere. You don't have to buy it from Roku.com. If you get from Amazon, Best Buy, Walmart, wherever, you can get three months of Hulu and three months of Pandora for free. All right, let's get into the news. Yesterday, we reported on um, YouTube saying, hey, we're tracking down some issues with buffering um, affecting Roku owners. Well, Roku, or YouTube has now posted an update about this, and it's not just Roku owners. It seems to be buffering issues tracing back to Spectrum Internet. So if you're a Spectrum Internet customer, you may be experiencing buffering. This explains in part why some people say I'm having a horrible time with YouTube TV, and other people are like, hey, I don't have any problem. I'm not getting any buffering. According to a statement posted by one of YouTube's official Reddit accounts on Reddit, that the buffering started on Friday the 22nd. I'm reading this quick quote from him real quick, or her. And it seems um, scoped specifically to our web and living room playbacks and spectrum slash charter cable customers only. Seems to be affecting our TCP traffic, not our QUIC, hence why mobile playback is okay. Some technical terms there. The short end of it is the standard of how they communicate with their your laptop or your TV, smart, Roku, whatever it is, is what's being affected here. It seems that they, according to them, that they trace this back to Spectrum. Now, a few people have said they've had buffering on other internet services, but the vast majority seem to be Spectrum. So there seems to be some type of issue with YouTube TV on Spectrum systems here, and they are investigating. I wish I had additional details right now. Sadly, I do not, other than to state that YouTube TV is investigate them this and is looking into it. So let me know, are you a Spectrum customer? Are you experiencing this weird buffering when you're streaming on your TV or your laptop or your computer, whatever it may be? And um, are you on another service? Are you experiencing buffering? Now, a couple quick tips. Buffering is typically an issue on your end. There are exceptions like this case right here, but the number one cause of buffering is weak Wi-Fi. Try your best to make sure your TV has the most powerful Wi-Fi signal possible. Ethernet is always best, but I understand that's not always possible. You can't run Ethernet cable throughout your entire home. It may not be practical, but um, if you can, that's great. If not, try to give it as strong of a Wi-Fi signal as possible because if you're right next to your router, you may be getting 100 down, let's say, but if you're on the edge of it, you may only be getting 10 down because the Wi-Fi signal is weak slows down the internet because it's struggling to maintain a connection to the base station. So keep that in mind. If you're struggling with Wi-Fi um, check or with buffering, check your Wi-Fi. Make sure you have a powerful enough Wi-Fi router. 
uh, that's not being overloaded. You know, Wi-Fi routers actually have a maximum amount of devices. And if you have a cheap little Wi-Fi router, well, in today's age of smart doorbells, refrigerators, dishwashers, everything is connected to your Wi-Fi network, you may find yourself with 30 or more devices connected to your Wi-Fi system. If that is the case, you may want to seriously look into uh, a bigger Wi-Fi router that can handle more devices. You can go to your Wi-Fi settings to see how many devices you have there. But I did find that it is true that when you, if you have a cheap Wi-Fi router that says good for like 20 devices, if you start having 30, 40 devices, you can overwhelm that. It's another big issue there too. So keep that in mind. Those are just a couple quick tips of some of the more common issues I see with buffering. And let me know again, if you're effect, being affected by any buffering with YouTube TV. Well, from one live TV streaming service to the next, PlayStation View yesterday shut down um, its on-demand section and its search is currently non-operational. No idea what's happening here. Sony has not said, but Sony did um, shut it out. So if you go to the PlayStation View app on many devices, you may notice the on-demand section is gone. The content's there, it's just a lot harder to find. You need to go in, if you wanna watch a show, you need to find its channel, look at that channels page, and then surf through its on-demand content there. Unfortunately, um, using the search is no longer good, so you gotta scroll through everything. Now you may see the search block still there. At the time I'm recording this, when you executed a search, it just said nothing could be found. Searching for CBS or ESPN or stuff it should easily find, it's not returning any results right now. Hopefully Sony fixes this issue soon. Right now they have not said what's happening. They haven't commented on it. A lot of people are worried that you know Sony's just going to cripple PlayStation View here. I don't think Sony's going to do that. Um, there may be a technical glitch. Maybe they don't have all the staff monitoring the system like they used to. Um, I don't know. But we are keeping a close eye on this. If you notice any changes with PlayStation View other than the on-demand and the search not working, leave us a comment. Let us know. Help us out. Um, thanks to the readers who sent this tip in. Well, if you find any news, make sure to go to corecarsnews.com, click on the Contact Us button, and then leave us a comment uh, right there. Include as much detail as you can. If it's a, like a link to something on the web, include the link that makes it really easy for us to find it. Sometimes people say, hey, on the Sony website, there's this page, and we have to spend 20, 30 minutes trying to find that page. So send us a link, it's a huge help. But See, but Sony is seeming to be struggling right now with a few glitches. Hopefully they're glitches. Hopefully they didn't deliberately disable search. That seems weird to me. We'll wait and see. All right, back to YouTube TV real quick. If you are a YouTube TV customer and you've never had YouTube Premium or YouTube Music, uh, you may want to check your email because YouTube TV has been emailing uh, customers to offer them three months of free YouTube Premium, which allows you for offline viewing, uh, ability to download videos, all kinds of different features, and ad-free YouTube watching on regular YouTube, not on YouTube TV, plus YouTube music with access to thousands of um, songs uh, for free if you're a YouTube TV customer. Now, to get this deal, you need to have received a targeted email. That email is only good for you. You can't go share that with other people. It's your email tied to your account. Um, but this is a pretty good deal. You just need to remember to cancel if you don't intend to keep it. But right now, um, you can get access to the YouTube Premium, which I think is $11.99 last time I checked, and YouTube Music Premium, which I believe is $9.99 a month for free for three months. You have a little bit of time to take advantage of this, but I would highly encourage you, if you have it, give it a try. And one of the great things about core cutting is all the free trials out there. All right, next story up of the day. Sony Crackle is ending support for some devices. Uh, recently, Sony posted a warning on their website saying on December 11th, 2019, they will be ending support for Crackle on soon Sony Blu-ray discs, um, I believe DVD players too, if they still support those, and not Android TVs in the United States. So if you have a Sony Android TV, um, TV, you're fine. The Android TV app for Sony Crackle will continue. Now just call it Crackle since they sold it to the Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. But older Sony TVs predating the Android TV user interface will no longer get it. Blu-ray players, and I believe that also includes some DVD players too, don't count me on that, I'll double, try to double check that, will also be losing support for Sony Crackle. Kind of weird, Sony sold um, a majority of Crackle over to the Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment group. They have experience in streaming. It's not their first streaming service. 
And now they're just saying, hey, guess what? We're going in support for the app on a bunch of devices. Be, you know, it's kind of a weird move for Sony uh, because I believe they still have a partnership with Crackle and the Crackle, the new ownership of Crackle has been very complimentary of them. So hopefully there's some work around. Uh, again, though, it's one of those warnings of why I don't like proprietary smart TVs. You know, I, if I go and get a smart TV, I want one that's like a Roku or a Fire TV smart TV because um, when, let's say the TV manufacturer stops supporting the TV, Roku continues to support that TV or Amazon continues to support that TV. We've seen that with Roku in the past. It's a great feature there, but it is the reason why I am leery of smart TVs and I am a bigger fan of the idea of off-frame um, a smart TV with a Roku built-in or Fire TV or a separate Roku or separate Fire TV. Good news is some if you're losing Crackle and you want it, get a cheap Roku, get a cheap Fire TV this weekend and you're all set. All right, last story up of the day. AT&T TV now has added three channels and these are the first time I believe they've ever been on a major live TV streaming service. QVC, QVC2, and the Home Shopping Network, HSN are now available on AT&T TV now, I believe in all packages, um, including the grandfather packages and the current ones. And um, this is the first time. Now you have been able to watch these channels for free through their dedicated app, but now you get to have it all in one place. I know this is kind of one of those channels that where it's like, most people probably could care less, but there's people out there who love it. So check this out. Um, AT&T TV now, now includes QVC, QVC2, and the Home Shopping Network as part of your package. Check that out. Link in the show notes down below. Thank you to a reader again. That was a tip sent in by a reader. I really appreciate it. Well, that's it for today. I hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Please be safe on Black Friday shopping. Don't get run over. Please, please stay online. Do some shopping through our links. I'll appreciate it. But be safe out there. Have a great week. Um, if I don't see you again until next week, no matter what you're doing, stay at home, working retail, been there, had to do that in the past, I understand. And I'll be here all day Friday covering the world of core cutting, making sure you don't miss any of the best core cutting deals out there. So I hope everybody takes care, has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. 125,000 subscribers on YouTube. Unbelievable. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And to all the new viewers here, thank you. To all the old viewers have been here forever, I see some of you for years now have been coming to our core cutting Q and A's and more. I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate your support. And I hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Special thanks to all the staff out here, Becca, our office manager, slash do everything. Jess, our um, senior uh, reporter here at Core Cars News, she's really been doing a great job. Tamara, our, our new editor, writer, Thank you to all the staff at Core Cars News. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all tomorrow. Well, I'll post tomorrow, but I'll see you all on YouTube on Friday. Take care, everybody.